Hey ladies and gents, it's Zemback and we are doing the iconic plane review of the F4 Corsair. Um, yeah, so 1938, the Bureau of the uh, United States Navy put out a requirement for a fighter uh, that had a stall speed no greater than 70 miles an hour, had a thousand mile range, uh, and had at least four guns. Uh, Vought took up the challenge. Uh, and in 1940, their first prototype flew, um, which was kind of interesting because it was the first aircraft, U.S. aircraft, to be able to achieve 400 miles an hour. Um, you know, at this time, of course, uh, you know, the Hellcats, um, the Wildcats that, uh, and whatnot were the mainstay of the, uh, of the U.S. Navy. However, uh, this aircraft simply outperformed both of them uh, in ridiculous altitude performance, uh, speed, uh, in every which way possible. Mostly from the fact of its huge, massive uh, double wasp, uh, it's R-28. Uh, yeah, the R-28 engine. Uh, this is the same engine they also that was also in the P-47. Uh, the P-47 was actually just a slightly bit faster at 13, mile, 13 miles an hour faster, uh, but that didn't definitely didn't uh, bother Corsairs, considering Corsairs were developed as carrier-based aircraft, uh, which means for the most part they were heavily, more heavily built uh, than the Air Force, uh, Air Force's aircraft. Now this is where it kind of gets a little strange. So the U.S. Navy took um, delivery of the first production F, uh, the Corsair in 1942. Um, during carrier trials, it, it kind of earned kind of a bad reputation. Yeah, it was called the Hog. Uh, due to its large nose, uh, the Widowmaker, because it was uh, kind of a handful. Uh, the Apparently one of the wings had a tendency to stall out faster than the other one did. Uh, no visibility when landing. So the carrier trials for this aircraft took on for better part of almost two years. It was December 1944 before this thing was finally uh, um, cleared for carrier operations. Yeah, it's a naval aircraft, right? So in that time period, <laughs> uh, the Navy turned over these aircraft to the Marine Corps, and that, that's where this becomes, you know, one of the more iconic, famous planes. Uh, if you've never watched Black Sheep with Pappy Boyington, who was one of the leading aces uh, in the Pacific, uh, where he received, uh, shot down 22 um, zeros in, just in this aircraft, I think we had 28 total, 22 in the F-4U. Uh, that's really where this uh, aircraft became the iconic plane that it was, uh, was with the U.S. Marine Corps. Uh, the U.S. Navy did use them, of course, but only from land bases. Yeah, it makes no sense. Develop a high, uh, high speed, um, very good aircraft, uh, but unable to uh, be used on a carrier. Kind of a little quirk in uh, history. Uh, what was also interesting to note was, is because, you know, if you if you read about the U.S. Air Forces, uh, they were still using 50 cals and whatnot. Uh, the U.S. Navy took up, uh, set up, took notice when they realized uh, the reports coming out of Europe in the 19, early 1940 uh, that the, th the 30 cals and the 50 cals were having a little bit more difficulty, uh, and they had changed the requirement for this uh, this plane to have uh, four 20s, four 20 millimeter cannons. So. Uh, Unbelievable kill to death ratio, 12 to 1 against uh, zeros. It, it, it its performance was just heads and shoulders above every zero it run into. Altitude performance, speed. Uh, the only way that a zero could uh, play with uh, uh, F4U Corsair uh, was in a low speed turn. Uh, and every other way it was outclassed, and hence why the 12 to 1 kill death ratio over um, the zero. Very sturdy aircraft, uh, that big radial engine could take a beating, uh, and uh, that's what, uh, toward the end of World War II, is that the, the, it became the most successful um, fighter bomber uh, for uh, the Pacific Theater. Uh, in fact, it was so successful, they were at a point where already up to almost 4,000 pounds of bombs that this thing could carry, uh, you know, everything from uh, in Okinawa, uh, the Philippines, yeah, it, it was used... Uh, you know, like I said, it was being used by mostly uh, Marine Corps pilots at that point. Um, you know, before it was able to, uh, before it was uh, past its uh, uh, the carrier boards. Uh, however, uh, not just the uh, United States Navy used it. Uh, the British actually used the Corsair for uh, on their on their aircraft carriers. They got around some of the issues that it had, uh, and they were able to 
uh, use it in a couple different uh, on a couple different uh, aircraft carriers. Uh, so, in fact, some of the designs that they modifications they worked out eventually helped this aircraft be um, past the uh, U.S. Navy uh, carrier trials. So, yeah, interesting aircraft uh, designed to be an aircraft. Uh, uh, carrier-based aircraft <laughs> didn't get used uh, until you know like literally the last nine months of the war uh, as a carrier-based aircraft um, it was produced from 1942 to 1953 this thing plane this with the longest uh, production of any piston uh, aircraft for the US uh, in uh, Navy or Air Force um, it was final deliveries in 1953 was to the French I mean the French used these for for quite a while um, you know it was interesting to read that the last uh, air combat this airplane flew was in 1969 in Honduras. Uh, I mean, the, these planes had a long legacy uh, of fighting a lot of little, uh, the Algerian War, uh, a lot of little brush fire wars uh, across the globe all the way up to almost 1970. I mean, well, 1969 was last year it was used. So, yeah, it's kind of an interesting thing. Uh, well, when it, after World War II, it, it moved on to Korea. Uh, there it was used entirely as a fighter bomber. Um, it did gain a little notoriety. One one um, fighter pilot was able to shoot down a MiG-15 with this. Uh, he got into a, the the MiG-15 got into a turn fight with the uh, F-4, uh, and he was able to knock out the MiG-15. However, the pilot shortly there later, I think, I believe five minutes later, was shot down by four MiG-15s. So yeah, uh, World War the Korean War, nothing up straight up um, fighter bomber uh, carry a large bomb load. Um, not just bombs, rockets, uh, and those big 420 millimeters uh, proved highly effective uh, in the ground combat uh, in Korea. So after, you know, like I said, we talked about up to 1969, it was still used. Uh, after the war, a lot of production, a lot of surplus of these aircraft were turned over to the civilian market, uh, and they became quite well known as a... Uh, uh, one of the air racers. Uh, in fact, if you go to the Reno Air, air, air Race and stuff, uh, these planes are still uh, bandied around quite often. Yeah, so it's a long storied history of this aircraft. Uh, there was, I believe, 16 different versions, 15, 16 models of this aircraft produced. Um, quite a capable aircraft and certainly one of the, uh, deserves the title of iconic uh, airplane, or aircraft uh, for the U.S. Navy. So, what do we get in game? Well, uh, this is a multi-role fighter. Uh, this is the Tier 7. Uh, I got two videos. I think I played the F2G in one, uh, and I believe the Tier 6 one, the F4U one, and the other one. Uh, what's, in my opinion, probably the one of the best multi-roles from 6 to 8. Uh, I mean, these these planes are awesome in the multi-role. Uh, they have enough altitude performance to be, uh, to deal with any turn and burn fighters. Uh, they have Decent maneuverability, of course, like I said, this is a multi-role. Um, decent uh, altitude performance, you know, they, they really don't have a problem with uh, zeros as long as you stay up about 2,200 plus meters. However, uh, its ceiling is only about 2,500 and it starts getting in the red, so definitely not dealing with things, anything with any kind of zoom and boom uh, and, and whatnot. However, good survivability, excellent 20 millimeters on this aircraft. You can't just, you cannot deny how good the 20 millimeters are on this aircraft. You get in on a plane, uh, it only takes a few bursts uh, to really work through them. And we're going to look at the upgrades on this aircraft. Uh, this is the F4U4, the Tier 7 one. You have an officer who carried two, two 500 pound bombs or eight uh, HFAR Mark IV rockets, which are pretty nice. And of course, the 420 millimeters. Uh, for some reason, I don't know why I don't have the top engine in this one. But anyway, uh, however, when you get to the F2G, this is where it really gets interesting. It's the nuclear bomb that it carries, 1,600 pounds, and of course, eight uh, uh, HFAR rockets. So this this right here has a crap ton of ordnance. This is probably almost as good as some of the GAs, <laughs> the lower tier GAs at least, uh, when it comes to sheer ordnance carried. Uh, very impressive aircraft at tier eight. Uh, probably in one of my opinion, one of the my most favorite, and I'm not even making an argument that this might be the best multi-role at Tier 8, uh, it's very possible. Uh, once again, with airspeed and maneuverability and altitude performance at Tier 8, it, it, it does pretty well. Um, I usually run on this aircraft. This one, I believe, I, I usually run the uh, gyroscopic gun sight, and I also run concealing livery 3. And you'll, know, you'll see when the video I was talking about, um, you know, with altitude performance, it's not the best to be up there dealing with, you know, uh, altitude uh, high 
energy fighters and heavy fighters. It can if it has to, but it uh, it's not the best at it. However, it does work pretty damn nice at taking out GAs, and you'll see in the video what I'm talking about. Uh, and of course, I run the Ordnance Delivery Site 3 uh, on this one just because of the sheer amount of ordnance it uses. Uh, so yeah, this is a very nice ground pounder when you have to take an objective that you need to destroy a ground target uh, or, you know, just simply, you know, um, you know, you don't, you run out of uh, defense planes and you have to, you have to blow something up and, and this is what it does really well. Uh, if you really wanted to, a lot of people I've seen, a lot of people use this just as circular, almost as a ground pounder uh, to dominate, uh, you know, you got enemy GAs there, you just pull in, kill the GAs, uh, and then finish off the target, because that does that's what it does really, really well. Um, the other F4U4, I think this is the one I use, F4U1, I'm running, it's, I didn't have a very good pilot in it, I moved it up years ago, uh, but do I, this one I run a lightweight airframe on it, uh, considering delivery two, and of course, uh, improved reflector sight, I'm not sure why I got that on there. Uh, normally I would probably run the ordnance delivery site or, or the improved covering uh, one or, and or the other uh, just because uh, historically as a ground pounder this thing is an, uh, was notoriously tough uh, and you want to play it that way you know this thing can take a beating uh, and that's typically how I play with it um, you know uh, below 2,000 meters if I'm dealing with anything it's GAs uh, those kind of things uh, getting shot up from by the rear gunners, uh, you know, putting that extra little bit on there. Because this is not a turn and burn aircraft. You don't want to get into those kind of fights. You want to use your speed and, and your altitude advantage over them. And this thing will outrun most turn and burn aircraft, no problem. Uh, if not, go, going into the vertical, you can usually, uh, as long as they're not a super bot, you should be able to clear their tail pretty easy. So I'm going to bring out the gameplay for you guys to look and check out the uh, badass Corsairs. Uh, and you can see what this little baby can do. All right, guys, back with the first game in the F4U1. This is the Tier 6 one, and it's a nice little matchup here. He's got an A6M3. This is a one-on-one, -on -one, uh, essentially, with a bunch of bots. Works out perfect for me. i got a military base to deal with, and, of course, forward airstrip, garrison, five objective map, and we'll see what we can do here. Uh, F4U, you know, it, it, it's got uh, decent speed. Uh, I'm not saying blazing fast, you know, obviously there's the P-51 and the BF-4 rides are probably faster, uh, but for the most part it is pretty quick. Uh, along with a nice boost you can get to altitude and deal with uh, essentially the heavy, uh, the heavy um, defense bots. And that's what the, the, the 420s, that's where you kind of notice uh, what I'm talking about here with the fact that it just pound the living piss out of most things it runs into. So I start out, you know, crap, we were already starting below a thousand meters, however, uh, use that big 15 second boost and you can get all the way up to close to 2,000 meters fairly quickly. Up we go here. We got the first bow fighter coming in and I got a little bit of help coming with me. Roll over here. I'm kind of seeing what the, he's going to be up to. I'm not I'm terribly sure so screw it. I'm going to go up to the vertical see if we can catch him while we're coming over the top. And down he comes. Pull in around on him. Oh Nelly, where's the 420s? Boom, boom. And yep, there we go. Pick up him. Got the other one. He was nice enough to turn out in front of me. Uh, once you get the pilot skills up and you get all the um, marksmen on it, uh, those 420s really stay nicely, nice in the uh, grouping. Now this is where it excels at, uh, of course, with the uh, four, uh, with the being a multi-role, uh, is the, of course the rockets here. So I'm going to drop a couple rockets in here, uh, see what I can do. I didn't drop all of them. I will turn to flip that one over. Uh, that leaves me with. Um, two left uh, and one more objective is all I really need to finish this off. I didn't place my shots real well on that last one. Uh, I probably should have had more rockets. I probably should have used, had saved the last four, uh, but I didn't know what that GA was up to. So back around, all I need is one ground target to knock it off. Them 420s, they don't have a problem with the soft targets. Pick up the um, uh, missile base right off the bat, and we're going to climb back up to altitude and uh, see if we can get back here into the middle here. And I want to be probably at least 2,000 meters plus. Uh, you know, being a multi-role, this is what you want to do. You want to be taking objectives as much as possible. However, that uh, the airfield over there, by the time I get over there, is probably going to be turned, so there's no sense in spending my time over there. So I'm going to help out, try to take off the center objective. Uh, we got the uh, I-183, and I'm not even sure, terribly sure, where the A6M3, I haven't seen him yet here. So pick up the bowfighter coming through right away. Um, you know, nice range on these, right around 700 meters, so you can really reach out and touch stuff, especially uh, heavy fighters that are trying to get away from you. 
Uh, you can just uh, reach out there and touch them hard. Pick up the P-47B, we pick up the center objective, and we almost got him, come on, a little bit longer. Uh, sometimes you just pull the trigger just a little too hard. So they finally take the airfield here, uh, sitting up about my 2,000 meters here. And now, you know, at this level, tier 5 and stuff, it's pretty hard for a lot of these planes to get up here. Pick up the MiG-3. He wants to go head-to-head. -head. That's never a good idea. You, just, you don't go head-to-head -head with a Corsair. Never. Bad, bad man. Pull over here. I got the Tomahawk coming. Uh, he wants to try his luck. Uh, he's going to give me his side. That's even better yet with these 420s. Uh, they do a real nice job of working through HP, especially when you hit <laughs> or you don't overheat your guns. So pick him up and up we go. Staying up here about my 17, 1800 meters. Uh, I got the Yak-1 coming up after me. Oh, never mind. I got the Bowfighter because he's right on my shit. Uh, takes a big chunk off me, but unfortunately he's currently not doing real well uh, and he can't get away. He's boosted out, so I'm just going to turn around and pummel him uh, with them 420s. Finish him off. And I'll get, like I said, standing around that 2,000 meters, let my uh, health build a little bit up. I've killed most of the planes here, and now I'm looking around to see what I can find uh, to shoot at. I thought for sure they would have killed the Yak, but nah, they fucked it up uh, and didn't finish him off here. Um, yeah, I'm still waiting. Does, like I said, I wasn't terribly sure what he was doing down there. I didn't want to dive down too low. Uh, back up again. Uh, we have a bunch of planes over here, and now it's time to take another objective. Uh, I had my rockets loaded, and I thought about making a quick run through there, but I was like, nah, there's way too many planes up here. Uh, I'm going to see if I can pounce on some of them, especially when they're KI-43s uh, and Russian uh, turn and burners. The only one I really have to work about, worry about is that Tomahawk. Pick up the I-80. He's about ready to stall out, so he's going to be a nice target. Unfortunately, he stalled out faster than I can switch shots. Pick him up quick as he's going away. There we go. Finish him off, and now I'm on the tail of the uh, Ju-88. Uh, you know, you can deal with bombers, especially bot bombers. Um, if they're not bots, then you're going to have problems. Um, the uh, bullfighter's too busy out there, so I'm going to worry about the tomahawk here. Tomahawk's going through, back up and over. Where are you going, buddy? Into the vertical. He's stalling out. He doesn't have enough oomph. And finish him off. That leaves me down here with... Oh, I got the bullfighter again. Um, I'm not sure what his problem with is. Garrick, you're a dick. It's the second time he's tried to make a pass at me. It's all right. We're just going to put a few more shells into him, finish him off, get the Lamberts. Now i got the Yak-1 coming in here. I'm not terribly sure why he's at 2,000 meters, but hey, whatever. Uh, the, the, your turn and burn plane doesn't do a whole lot of good up here. <laughs> so uh, we've pretty much, uh, yeah, just fucking shellacked this team. Uh, pull back around here. i got the Yak-1 coming in. Uh, this is not a plane that you want to be taking head on just about everything at its tier. <laughs> Finish off the Yak-1, except for, of course, maybe a, a heavy fighter. Um, the uh, KI-43, like I said, I'm not terribly sure why he's up here, but he is. Uh, about that time, uh, the P-47 shows back up again, sets me on fire, and we win the game. Uh, yeah, quick 12,300. So I got one more game for you guys and uh, to check out, so stick around. All right, guys, back with the second game in the uh, Corsair. This is the F2G, the Tier 8. Ah, yeah. And then, um, yeah, one of those kind of games. And I'm going to be playing this a little bit more. Uh, not, I'm not, actually, I don't think I even dropped any bombs. Maybe I did. No, I shot some rockets. I think that was about it. Uh, but this is more of along the lines of what being a multi-roll, what you can do with it now, which is my favorite, one of my favorite things to do in multi-rolls, is hunting GAs. Uh, you have... Uh, more HP and usually better guns than most of the light fighters at this uh, tier. So those big 420s, um, you know, on a GA is often nice. So you see, even at tier 8, 2600, uh, you're not going to get much. Maybe 27 best before you really start losing it in this fighter. So we're moving in here into the center. I'm, I'm only at altitude because I'm waiting for, of course, uh, the... Uh, the heavy fighters to come up in this uh, direction here. So we pick up the J4M coming through. Yep, there we go. Reach out and touch somebody with them big long 20s. And around he goes. Let's see if we can pick him up here before he uh, gets away. Oh, pick him up. And that's about the time I notice. Here comes the heavies. Uh, yeah, here they go. So I'm going to see if I can get that guy off that other, that bot tail. Didn't work. And I pick up one more airplane coming through. Ooh, too late. Put a couple more shells in this character before he gets away. And uh, that's about the time, of course, I notice uh, 
there's still that guy's still on my tail the uh i2 i believe it's an i something so put it up in the vertical and this is where bots are just an absolute pain in the ass i'm at 2400 meters and there is a yak 15 that is currently trying to make passes at me pull back around here see if i can nail out this heavy fighter i thought for sure that yak probably didn't have any more altitude left finish off edgar in the p1 one one zero five six uh, and I got the uh, I-250 coming through here. See if I can finish him off too before I die. Uh, and I, I, I literally, like I said, it's a Yak-15. Yep. Oh, no, this is BVP. The BVP actually wasn't shooting at me. Uh, it was this Yak. Um, yeah, a Yak-15 at 2,400 meters roughly. Fuck, and making vertical passes. Uh, fucking super bots. Gotta love that. <laughs> they kill me. They absolutely kill me in this game. So back, back into battle here. We almost got the objective turn. We're sitting at we're sitting actually one one right now. Uh, we've taken the military base here, and now we got uh, a bunch of GAs down here. And this is what this plane also. I mean, not just being able to flip objectives uh, with your bombs and rockets and uh, taking out uh, enemy the enemy defense bots, uh, but uh, when you really got to get down low and dirty uh, and taking out GAs, uh, this is really a nice plane to do it with. Uh, all the F4Us are. Uh, they have the HP for it. You set it up right uh, so it can take a beating, uh, and you don't use lose a whole bunch of uh, HP and, uh, and and getting damage and all that kind of stuff. Uh, it is a pretty tough little plane. Pulling here on the IL-20. Uh, they finish him off before I can get in on him. Pull back around here. We got the, uh, yeah, there we go. Here he comes again. Let's see if we can finish him off quick before he gets away. Put a couple sh 20s into him. He's rolling up and away. Oh, can't, you can't escape the 20s, buddy. Sorry, sorry. So they're all above me, and I'm down here with an ME329, uh, and it's time to uh, finish this off. They've, they're doing a pretty, he's doing a pretty nice job. I'll give him that. Looking around here, everything's up high. Um, I'm just going to drop down in here. I want to get this guy killed off as fast as possible. Uh, they have a tendency to uh, put a, a large amount of ordnance down really quickly and turn objectives. So roll through. And they finish him off. Uh, the G8, or I should say, the anti-aircraft does. Uh, so that leaves me here with the uh, once again the I-250, and we're gonna see if we can boost up here. We're, we're really close to losing this objective, and he, if he nails, uh, you know, two more, one more actually, fighter, uh, there's a good chance we could lose this. So I need, he needs to die. Pull back around. He gets in, get into a dive on him, and just start wailing him on them with them 20s. Finish them off, turns the objective back. So I'm relatively safe right now uh, until the next GA comes in. Ah, here comes Mr. IL-10 again. Uh, yeah, great little, uh, you know, if you got to, you got to, right? Uh, it, it, it works a lot better than the other light fighters, uh, you know, this multi-role does uh, for clearing out uh, GAs. Come back in on the IL-20. Oh, yep, I was really worried about this. I didn't know if he was going to be able to flip it or not. Put a bunch of bursts into him. He's almost dead. Um, back around we go. I was really hoping he was turn away because you know that's what the bot behaviors. Uh, I'm waiting for him to turn away, uh, and he finally does. This allows me to come back in on him. Yeah. So bots have a tendency to do that. As soon as you loop one way, they go the other direction. So I was kind of banking on that. Unfortunately, he just kept fucking flying. So I don't know if they just get smarter or what. Um, We've still got 320 to 102. We're at three objectives, and we have the airfield and the uh, missile base. So I'm going to go up here into the vertical here and see if I can get some more altitude back up. Maybe help these guys up on top. Uh, X5U is moving through here. Uh, I-250, and we got one. Yep, that's the X5U. So I'm going to come in here and see if I can help out this bot from dying. Ah, uh, there we go. God, I love them 20s. They they just do such a nice job when you get in on them. Pull back around. Yep, there you are. Uh, I need to get rid of that plane. Finish him off. And now I got... Ooh, I-250 still pissed. Oh, what are you going to do, Nikita? Oh, yep, sets me on fire. Love that shit. Pull back around. Yeah, there we go. Put some more shells into him. And he's got my engine knocked out. But that's all right. We pull around. We're, we're slowing down enough that we can pull around and do that kind of shit. <laughs> Engines back up here shortly, and we're up four to one right now. I like I said, I only played. I just played this one and the other one. It was four, two easy wins, two quick easy wins. Uh, I can't complain. Yak 15 is going to go head to head. Uh, you just don't. No, 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 nope, nope, nope. 
That's a, that's not a good idea. Uh, he takes it in the. Uh, he gets beat up like you wouldn't believe. Uh, yeah, he's going to come back around here, uh, finish him off. And now I got the GA back down uh, on the bottom. Uh, we'll see if we can drop back on ILO 20. We're going to finish him off, and then we're going to go deal with that other objective uh, one more time. So down we come, put some shells into him. You know, it, with that enough firepower, the enough HP, uh, yeah, you, you don't have really have a problem uh, dealing with uh, GAs. Multi-roll, take objectives, back and shoot the shit out of GA as much as you can. See one, even if it's one on your own team, just shoot him down. What the fuck? So they've almost got the uh, missile objective back. Uh, GA gets finished off. Uh, I did enough damage to him. Pull back around here. We got the SU-9 coming in. And this is not a good place to be, but you know what? At this point, no, let's see if we can put some rockets into him. <laughs> I didn't get him. Uh... But uh, I, he had just enough HP left, or I had hit him enough with the cannons and rammed, rammed killed him. Uh, it worked out here. So uh, ME329 uh, rolling through our objective. Now they're going to kill him. So I'm going to head over here to this objective here and see if I can pick up some more points. Uh, squall lines up. We're yeah, we're racking up the points. We got four. It's a four to one right now, and uh, they're all over my GA here. We got missiles dropping on this objective. So I'm going to see if I can pick up some uh, easy objective points uh, to finish this off here. One ground target, drop in, drop my rockets here, yeah, there we go, pick that up, knock that out, and now I'm looking for uh, enemy fighters. Uh, yeah, that's what you gotta love about G um, about the uh, multi-rolls, being able to do not just the air-to-air, uh, -air, but uh, the ground attack as well. Flip back up and finish it off with a nice 10, yeah, 10K. So thanks for watching, guys, and uh, have a good night.